Have you ever made a decision that just defies logic? But you're so determined to make it work and so stubborn that it doesn't matter how many therapists you see, you're going to make it happen. This is my low cost 7R7 project and one day it might look something like that. And the reason I've called it the 7R7 is quite simple. It's based on a Caterham 7, however, I'm installing an RX7 turbo engine, transmission, rear differential and suspension. Or at least that's the plan. Let me show you where the problem lies. Now I don't really have a problem with the engine. It's nice and small. It's actually going to sit quite far back. Transmission, I can mount all that. That's relatively easy. Gear stick comes up at a nice place. Even the rear differential will get mounted up here. I just need to make a couple of plates. No, no, the problem is the rear suspension setup. The rear hubs connect to this monstrosity of a trailing arm, which has been cut, by the way. It's usually goes to about there and about here and has normally a bush there and a bush there and the whole thing pivots like that. It's far too big to fit in this little space here. It would intrude into the, the seats. The whole car is going to be like that off the ground. I just don't have the space to install all of this. And here is where the problem lies. This knuckle is attached to this trailing arm at three points. This point here, straight away, you can see that's a problem because it's diagonal, it's not coming straight out. If I was to do like a Miata suspension, they just come straight out. Pretty simple, but you know, I don't like doing things the easy way because I'm a fool. So you've got this diagonal point. There's a point down there which actually slopes that way. And we do have one straight join here. So that's not so bad. So even if I get those things sorted, connected to the car, I then have the problem of the suspension coilover has to get mounted somewhere as well. I've just realised I've got these sitting the wrong way around. This one should be on the other side and vice versa. But I had to do it this way for demonstration purposes. Let me swap them over. Okay, that makes more sense. So, as I was saying, this trailing arm would get mounted kind of here and here. Well, you know, down there. And it would pivot like that. That's not the way I want it to work. I actually want it to pivot up and down that way. So we have some problems. Right, first thing I want to do, dismantle all this. So I'm going to cover it in WD-40, let it marinate for a wee while, see how much I can get off without snapping bolts. Let me explain what's going on. Caliper carrier. I got this bolt out, no problem at all. That one was already snapped. That was not me. So in order to get the, the carrier off, it needs to go that way. Luckily, it is threaded into the carrier. So if I can get it through there, then I'll be able to get the stud out or the bolt out. But I can't do that until I get the disc off. And I can't get the disc off because... I can't get those screw, screws out that are holding the disc on. So I'm just trying to take everything else off just now, just to make it a bit easier to work with, get things out of the way. So I'm going to remove this. The big bolt I was attacking a second ago down here, it's a 21 mil. I don't have access to get the, the socket on because the disc's in the way. It's a vicious circle. 
Anyway, let me proceed. So the inner sleeve of this bushing is stuck on that instead of inside there. So it's just catching and it's just not releasing. That was easy. Okay, let's try and get this disc off. So in their wisdom, they're using like Phillips screws to hold a brake disc in place. I just, I just can't get it off and I don't want to destroy these little uh, bolts because then I'll need to drill them out. So I'm going to have to get an impact driver, you know, the thing you put on and you hit it with a hammer. So I will strip the other one down and then we can at least do a bit of a mock up with where it's all supposed to go. You know what? I'm not giving up that easy. And I'm thinking that even if I get the brake disc off, I'm still not... Well, it won't come off, I'm thinking, with... Let me start again. Even if I remove the nuts holding the brake disc on, I still don't think it's going to come off past this. So I think I need to get this carrier off. So I'm going to try the old weld a nut to the stud trick. And then hopefully release it. Because I've been moving the carrier back and forward, it might have loosened it enough for it to be more um, cooperative. So we'll try that. Let that chill for a minute. That should do it. Right, I have had pretty much zero luck with this technique. Don't know how everyone else manages to do it, but maybe today will be my lucky day. Unlikely though. Wow. I think the problem is that the heat is being dissipated through the aluminum hub. I'm just going to crank up the power and try again. I have plenty of these nuts to try. <laughs> I don't think that'll work. I think it's just laying the weld on top. <laughs> I need to wait, the nut's expanding. Well, I might as well put the other bolt back in so that I'm not fighting with it when it does start moving. <laughs> if it starts moving. Okay, 
Let's try again. Nah. Right, third time lucky. Last chance. Where's my where's my ratchet? Oh, come on. Moving on. So I stripped the other side down and uh, the same carrier bolt snapped. It's one of those days. Right, let me do a bit of a mock-up and I can really show you and explain what I'm intended to do with this, okay? I'm going to have a floating diff. Let me give you a closer look. The diff is at the approximate position, kind of centered in that channel there. Obviously I want the shafts coming right out the middle. And height wise, not sure yet because obviously I don't have wheels and the frame is sitting about four inches too high because it's on that trolley. So it needs to come down a wee bit. So obviously I need to figure that out later. But here's the tricky part. I need to be able to connect this to the frame, that one to the frame, and the lower one to the frame, somehow. And I also need to be able to attach a shock absorber slash coilover. So it's gonna be a wee bit uh, tricky, and I'm not great at maths, so I'm gonna to have to go back to school Now I know what you're thinking, why am I making life so hard for myself? Necessity, honestly. I cannot get an, a, a Mazda running gear. Anytime one comes up for sale for parts, it's gone within like 30 seconds. It's just not happening and it's really expensive. So I'm determined to get the RX-7 engine to wheel situation solved. If anyone has attempted this kind of independent suspension fabrication, please leave a comment. Happy to share ideas. Well, to be given ideas because I don't have any at the moment. We'll make it work. Me and you. Okay, that's me for today, except I've got a couple of stickers to put in the book. I've got a couple of stickers. I've got a couple of stickers to put on the board. We have two stickers today. A dinky little one from Bad Ombre and a nice big fat one from Turlow's Garage. Um, there. There you go, Joe. There you go. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Andy. And I hope you reach your thousand subscribers very soon, Andy. I know you're close. Anyone want to go and help a, help a fellow out? Turlow's Garage. Link in the description. And Joe, I'll give you a link as well. 
Right, I need to go and order some tools. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.